what else can AI potentially do to enhance our data, to enhance the trust? Yeah, sure. So hopefully some of you have heard of BASE. It's uh, Coinbase's layer two blockchain. Uh, it's been pretty successful in the industry. I think we'll see a lot of growth there and, and other layer twos that are coming out to, to really uh, attack that scalability effort. Um, we think that using blockchain technology is just going to greatly improve AI uh, outputs. You know, if AI is scalable everything and blockchain is scalable truth, when you marry the two, you really just get those significantly better, more useful outputs um, that, that can be used more, more broadly. Um, yep. Um, I think it was mentioned again a few times today around agents and multi-agents. Um, I think that, that space is very fascinating. Like right now, we're seeing more startups kind of come into the mix, um, focusing on that. And I think at the larger scale institutions, they're looking at it more from a theoretical standpoint. But I think when we get to a point where you have highly specialized, multi-agent um, to agentic type behavior, that is really where blockchain can bring added value again. Because you think about it you know, from a, a wallet, a digital um, passport standpoint, what effectively blockchain can do there is provide that history of that AI's c configuration, the, the data sources, any actions that have effectively been taken. And then, you know, when you look at the smart contract capability as well, you can actually program then these agents and use that technology uh, to configure rules and, um, and also just execute diff various type of actions. And again, you have that tamper resistant traceability. So you have that audit log. It's effectively an audit and reconciliation log and um, powerhousing these agents, which is really important if your business is going to be using these to make somewhat, you know, independent decisions down the line as well. Kind of powerful uh, idea, right? To let, let this power, you know, technology let, let loose on itself. Um, but I guess just to kind of take a picture of where we are, right? We're inundated with all this information. There's questions on accuracy, questions on hygiene. Um, you know, start talking to me, or I, I guess from your individual perspective, what does is, what is kind of tomorrow bring? Obviously, we got a lot of macro headwinds to, to help navigate. You, know, you, you mentioned a, you know, a governance, there, there could be administrational changes. Um, obviously, that, that brings into you know, the, the, the conversation on the regulatory framework. But I guess just from a day-to-day -day micro level, you know, where are, you, are maybe your firms individually looking to leverage some of this, this powerful data? I think I'm going to talk about it again from an AI mainly standpoint. But you know, the reason why only 30% of companies are really moving from pilot to production when it comes to AI is because they're concerned around the data privacy. Um, risk mitigation is obviously a big thing as well. Um, and then it's more of, you know, a people and process issue rather than a technology issue. But when we look at the data privacy piece, all of the use cases thus far, regardless of the industry, have been mainly employee assist type use cases around operational efficiency. And so when companies start to get more comfortable um, as to how to leverage that data, the unstructured data, and have the right guardrails, I think the types of use cases that we're going to see are going to be totally kind of different. Right now, it's really just focused on that ROI um, around the operational efficiency. But think about, you know, even in a year to two years' time, the type of use cases that we're going to see are, are going to really kind of disrupt a lot of business models, in my opinion, anyway. 